Good evening. I will tell you the story on how democracy came to Africa and about the white man who thought that it had never been there before. Uh, since 1980, 90, sorry, I've, I've been living in Africa, coming and going, and I always wondered as a journalist what's happening inside the palaces, inside the presidential offices. How are they talking? How are they dealing? What jokes do they have? How is the power struggle? How do they discuss? And suddenly, 2006, I ended to be there. Not as a visitor, not for an interview, but, but one of the staff in South Sudan as an advisor for an African president, uh, Salva Kiir. We were 50. Everybody had come from exile. Some came from the bush. Some came from small villages. They had been commanders, or they were relatives of some high guys in the government. So they got a job in the new constitution. We were 50 at the president's office, and we started the work to set up a new democracy in Africa, the youngest of them all. Suddenly I realized that at the president's office, there is only one Democrat. 49 guys, they have never been into democracy. They might have a manual, they've heard about it, it's a good idea, but to practice democracy, they've never done it before. There was one guy, and that happened to be me. I was the only one that had grown up in a democracy, that had the idea that there was no other options than democracy. I was there knowing that I can say just what I want without thinking of the consequences. I have the freedom of speech. I have the freedom to all things. It's a right to have uh, health care and, and all these things. And I was also living a place where I know that when I paid my tax, well, things will go smooth. I will get what I need if I get sick or lose my job or whatever. I was the only Democrat in Southern Sudan's office of the president. And all the others were about to practice this democracy that they were in favor of. And I, we discussed this every day as long as I were, were, were there, how to do things. And they asked me, how do they do this in Europe? And I tried to explain, and all explanations didn't help them at all, because I discovered democracy need 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 bits and pieces that we take for granted. We take for granted that a political idea starts in a party, in a program, it goes through elections, negotiations, hearings, the, 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 the bureaucracy are discussing and finding ways of implementing things, and there's an organization to implement. None of these things existed. So you can make decisions, nothing will happen simply because you don't have the machinery. You have got the key, but there is no engine. That was a shock to me, and it, it suddenly it also came very strange that the, the, the donor nations in Europe they were telling the African countries, you have to implement democracy, and how is it going? 20 years are gone. How is it going? 10 years, 30 years. How is democracy going? There's a lot of failure, and so on. Forgetting completely that we have had 200 years on this process that we ask them to produce within 20 years. We used 100 years to give the women the right to vote. And in 1972, it was no longer a crime to be a homosexual. So that is our history, and we are demanding them, come up with democracy. If not, you can forget the money. Two ministers could sit down by the Nile sharing a beer, discussing a good idea. They came up with a good idea, and then they presented it in the government meeting on Friday, and it became a law. And they didn't have the money, so they must find a donor to, to, to come up with the money. And 
so was done, which actually say a lot of the next problem. It is often the donor nations. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's save the children, the church aid, the, the UN. They have the money. They have the tools. They have the cars. They have the trucks. They have the staff. They could do it. In southern Sudan, the Norwegian former minister, Hilda Johnson, was the UN top. She had more power there than any of the ministers. In Shimoyo, after the war in Mozambique, I saw that save the children in that city. They had a nice house, they had the money, trucks, staff. They could do what was needed to be done. But the municipality, that had a lot of ideas, they had no money. They had to trust on the donors and these organizations. And how democratic is that? So Africa has nothing. Of course, Africa has nothing. Of course, Africa, Africa has a lot of traditions that we never listen to. We exported the Europe, not the democracy, but the, the, the European parliamentarian systems. The Westminster model to all British colonies, which actually mean that the, the winner takes all, and in societies with small and big tribes, everything goes to the big tribe. Mugabe was very happy with that. He got 95% of the seats in the parliament after 60% of the votes. But they have other things. The old men sitting under the acacia trees, discussing and discussing. And they know none of us have the solution, but we're going to find it together. That was the old Africa, the ancient Africa. But suddenly, in 1991, it popped up again. Two guys were sitting at a green table, Nelson Mandela and F.W. de Klerk. And they had the idea to create a constitution in South Africa. And both of them had a right to vote, to, 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 to veto. Both of them could turn down the other one's proposals. The clerk with the police behind him, the army behind him, the administration of the money behind him. Nelson Mandela had nothing <laughs> except the people of South Africa. And they discussed, it took four years, and they created these two old men. They created the most modern, most democratic, most liberal constitution in the whole world. And they used the old African tradition of consensus, the old man under the acacia tree. And they also knew about this African philosophy that is so remote from us, Ubuntu, togetherness. That is only together you can create good spirit, a good society. That is the African democracy. Togetherness with the extended family that can help each other. One time of your life you receive, another time of life you have to give away. That is how they can come out of the, the horrendous apartheid years with reconciliation and forgiveness. This is what Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, put into the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and actually prevented a civil war in South Africa which easily could have occurred. So we brought the democracy to Africa, yes, but it took a long time before we found out that they have their own way of ruling in a democratic way. Now I see Africa is taking up their own tradition. And please, Africans, don't use our methods. Listen to what we say and dig in your own culture to find the way. And then afterwards, you can come to us and tell how you do it. Because we need that African civilization of reconciliation and forgiveness. Thank you.